approach of Atlantis on its final flight in shuttle program history to the blue collar work uh, that will be undertaken in the inspection of the shuttle's uh, thermal protection system today. Standard flight day two activity for the four astronauts on board the orbiter as they prepare for their arrival at the International Space Station tomorrow. So now uh, more than 19 hours following the launch of Atlantis, Commander Chris Ferguson, pilot Doug Hurley at the aft flight deck of the orbiter ready to pick up uh, work as they uh, will maneuver the shuttle's robotic arm that you see in the upper right-hand corner of this view from payload bay cameras uh, aboard Atlantis. Uh, it will uh, be extended over to the starboard sill to grapple the orbiter boom sensor system. Uh, payload retention latches will be commanded open and uh, the boom will be lifted out of its sill on the starboard side of the payload bay. Uh, its uh, cameras and lasers uh, will be activated. Its sensors uh, will be activated and calibrated uh, for the start of the inspection of the leading edge of the starboard wing and the reinforced carbon carbon along uh, the wing itself. The shuttle robotic arm now in motion, uh, that confirmed by the payload deployment and retrieval systems officer here in Mission Control. There are two grapple fixtures on the orbiter boom sensor system. The uh, grapple fixture to which uh, the shuttle's robotic arm will affix itself to momentarily uh, is also used to power up the intensified uh, video camera and the uh, laser range imagery equipment. That is uh, basically at the forward end of the boom. There is also a midpoint grapple fixture that is used by the station's robotic arm uh, that will be used uh, to grapple uh, the boom and hand it off to the shuttle's arm after docking uh, because uh, the shuttle arm uh, cannot reach around the orbiter docking system once uh, the shuttle is linked up to the International Space Station's pressurized mating adapter number two. And this view from an end effector camera on the shuttle's robotic arm as it uh, now hovers above the grapple fixture, this electrically fixed grapple fixture uh, at the end of the uh, orbiter boom sensor system. A short time from now, uh, the shuttle's robotic arm will uh, be maneuvered uh, down to grapple on to that fixture, after which payload retention latches uh, will be released to enable the boom to be lifted out of its starboard sill. A good view uh, from a camera at the rear of Atlantis's cargo bay looking uh, down the length of the orbiter boom sensor system and a good look at the business end of the OBSS as it is known uh, where the intensified television camera and the laser sensors are located and now the uh, process of beginning to lift the boom out of its moorings on the starboard sill underway. The survey uh, of the leading edge of the starboard wing of Atlantis will be followed by a survey of the nose cap of the orbiter and then the port wing of Atlantis. The leading edge of the reinforced carbon carbon along the leading edge of the wing uh, to be surveyed along with other areas of interest. All of this imagery being processed by laser dynamic imaging equipment, lasers and 3D sensors, as well as intensified TV cameras on board uh, the orbiter boom sensor system, the 51 foot long boom extension. Once uh, the survey is complete, uh, the boom will be stowed back uh, in its moorings on the starboard sill. It uh, will be at the ready if needed uh, for a uh, focused inspection 
of the orbiter's uh, thermal protection system should that become necessary. Uh, in the unlikely event that that would be needed, uh, there is time uh, that has been set aside on the sixth day of the mission uh, during docked operations for that to take place, although uh, the early indications are that Atlantis' heat shield is in excellent shape and uh, that a focused survey would not be required. However, the mission management team uh, will be the final uh, authority on that uh, based on uh, all of the imagery uh, that will be analyzed uh, from this survey, from the ascent imagery that is being processed back here at the Johnson Space Center, as well as uh, high-resolution digital still imagery that will be taken tomorrow during Atlantis's final approach for docking as uh, three of the crew members aboard the International Space Station, uh, Russian cosmonaut Sergei Volkov, along with uh, NASA astronauts Ron Garin and Mike Fossum, uh, will be... Uh, in the Zvezda service module using a variety of high resolution lenses. Volkov will be using a 1000 millimeter lens. Mike Fossum will be using an 800 millimeter lens and uh, Japanese astronaut uh, Satoshi Furukawa will be using a 400 millimeter lens uh, to uh, take hundreds of images of Atlantis as it executes the final rendezvous pitch maneuver, the rotational backflip that the orbiters uh, have been conducting uh, since return to flight uh, back in 2005 at a point uh, at about 600 feet directly below the International Space Station when Commander Chris Ferguson uh, initiates uh, about a nine-minute maneuver for about 90 seconds of uh, usable photography of all of the key surfaces of the orbiter's uh, belly and uh, all of its key areas of its thermal protection heat shield. We copy, Rex. Thanks. Hey, Houston, uh, if you don't see a reason why we shouldn't do otherwise, we're just going to uh, get center line camera checkout done right now. And, Fergie, we're good with that. It may be easier um, config-wise if you do the docking mech in it first. That'll get power to the lights that you may use during that camera checkout. Yeah, that's a real good point. Uh, thanks very much. And how are you doing, Megan? It's good to hear your voice again. Doing great, Fergie. Happy to be here working with your team. And uh, you guys looked great launching yesterday. It was fun to be there. Man, it was exciting for us, too. Yeah, I'll bet. So, Megan, uh, now that we're talking about it, can we uh, get into uh, docking mech and it early? Absolutely. Go ahead. Megan, uh, if you want to, you guys are welcome on board the flight deck. Thanks very much. Uh, we are there with you now. You guys look great. Yeah, we're all crammed into the aft part of the flight, flight deck. You would think with just four of us we would uh, be downstairs or something else, but uh, got a pretty good pass going, too. Hey, well, that's where the view is, I take it. Yeah, and that's where the windows are.
This is Mission Control Houston. The crew of Atlantis now playing back their onboard launch video that was taken yesterday during Atlantis's ride up into space. That is uh, Doug Hurley there on the far left, the pilot of STS-135. Back behind him, Sandy Magnus. Sitting beside her is Rex Walheim. You see the uh, solid rocket boosters ignite there. Just out of frame is Chris Ferguson. Houston, uh, Atlantis, when you're ready, The crew of Atlantis continuing to play back this video on board the shuttle yesterday as it lifted off and headed into space. It's giving you a sense of exactly what it's like to be on board the shuttle as it uh, heads up into orbit. You see the flash of the solid rocket boosters there uh, separating from the shuttle and the external tank. You can see the sunlight and the shadows are beginning to rotate around as the shuttle rolled to a uh, heads-up position. The shuttle does this during its launch in order to gain uh, more favorable communications with NASA's tracking and data relay satellite system. This is done during the final moments of powered flight. The shuttle at this point was still flying under its three main engines, still attached to the external tank. And there goes main engine cutoff. Hey Houston, coming down right now, if you see it, is uh, just prior to our NC2 burn this morning. 
Okay, I'll see our jig coming up here in just a second. And we see that. This is a short burn. This is Mission Control Houston. Out of all the traditions in history inside the Space Shuttle Flight Control Room, one of the more important ones to the team here are these roses that arrive uh, during every single mission. The Shelton family up near the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex has sent these roses to the team here in Mission Control uh, during every single flight since STS-26, which was back in 1988. So for 110 missions, these roses have been a part of the team here. Uh, it is something that they look forward to every single time. It would not be a... Uh, space shuttle mission without these roses arriving. Uh, we were surprised a bit yesterday whenever they arrived on launch day. That is the first time uh, that that has ever happened, but the uh, family, the Sheltons, they sent us a very nice note. We're going to read it to you now. The note says, to our good friends at Mission Control and the crews of STS-135 and Expedition 28, what a warm sight, Atlantis, the first orbiter seen in person by the Sheltons during a surprise visit to the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. Every second of this mission is exciting, thrilling, sad, and poignant. The handprints and heart prints of so many touch every surface, every moment. Thank you all for sharing it all, the glory and unspeakable pain with a grateful nation, a grateful planet. Godspeed, 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 the Sheltons and the Murphys. On behalf of Mission Control and the entire team here in Houston and the entire Space Shuttle program, we want to thank those families for supporting us all these years. We look forward to this tradition continuing with our next human spaceflight program. This is Mission Control Houston back with a live view inside the Space Shuttle Flight Control Room. That was a